In this video, I'm going to be talking about the day-to-day -day challenges of working toward financial independence. So that has been my goal ever since I heard about the term financial independence. Retire early, only at this point, I don't really think the retire early part is in my future, unless something amazing happens, and I want to always leave room for that. But I work a very moderately income job and my expenses are extremely high just due to the area that I live in. So barring an act of God, which could happen, I mean, I leave room for that. But right now my goal is simply to be financially independent in the, whatever time frame that is. At the moment, for me, that's about 19 years. For my husband, it's going to be slightly sooner because he is uh, a little bit older than me. So I'm projecting once that happens and he becomes financially independent, that might speed up my journey. So overall, the goal is financial independence. And I realize that this is not the way that like 98% of modern Americans think. Because I, at least the people around me are very much focused. Uh, most of my friends are in the same mode that I am just trying to make it through, right? And have some modest amount of savings. You know, you, if you put away, I'm going to say 12% comes out of your paycheck towards your IRA or towards your 401k, you're lucky. And then anything additional to cover any emergencies that come, come up. That is a challenge. So simply making it through day to day and not going into debt is a challenge, at least in this area for my the people that I know. There also is another subset of people that I am kind of around who are into the status symbols and are into enjoying the finer things, into going on vacations, into buying fancy cars and having nice things. And at least from what I see, those people are not high net worth individuals. Some of those people don't own their own, own homes and I would hazard to say because I don't know anyone's financial journey but I would hazard to also say that they don't have significant net worth I could be wrong but all this to say I'm looking at my own journey and the day-to-day -day challenges that I face in striving for financial independence so case in point you guys know I've shared before that I we just got a new car as a family a new to us car which is a used 2013 Toyota Camry and on the outset, from a financial independence point of view, this was a smart move to buy a modest, good condition used car. There have been a lot of challenges with that. And I am sharing this because there have been points when I have been tempted to say, I just want to be like everybody else and go into car debt. And it's really, really hard because there have been, again, a lot of challenges. So let me share with you the challenges. And then I will tell you again to reaffirm my commitment toward working toward financial independence, because I want to be someone, even if I have a modest income, I want to be a high net worth individual. That is my goal is being a high net worth individual. And studies have shown that these are people with modest expenses, people, teachers, element and firemen, policemen, people with modest incomes and low expensive expenses are more likely to get to that point of a high net worth than someone who has a high net worth and very high expenses. I'm thinking of The Millionaire Next Door. I actually need to reread that book in order to get more, um, more data and studies to back that up. So here, here are the challenges I face in my journey toward financial independence. And number one, it's with the car, I want to say, because Again, while I would do it again to buy a modest used car rather than going into car debt, going into $50,000 worth of car debt and having a payment of $1,500 a month, there are issues with the car. <laughs> I'm like, oh, because this was my, I'm very frustrated because this was my idea. And what I really pushed for in our family was to have a modest used car over a $1,500 a month car payment. And that's the way we went. We paid $12,000 cash for a modest used car. And we had we had to get work done on the car. We got about $2,300 worth of work done. And again, these were all necessary repairs that we knew about beforehand. It just all came at once. So we needed to get new tires. We needed to get the struts redone, which is very common for a car that's 10 years old. That car has 67,000 miles on it, though. It has half the normal mileage. So I just want to state that as well. But it's frustrating to have to, to put out the cash and then to have more put out. And I know that the brakes are going to need to be done soon because I can hear them squeaking. So those are just the mechanical repairs. On the other side, it's been raining a lot lately and the floorboards are wet. <laughs> I'm like, no, and that's just one thing. 
the floorboards are wet, which I've been YouTubing how to fix that. And it's probably either like an HVAC line is clogged or some, probably some line is clogged that's causing water to drip onto the car instead of onto the ground. So I need to, I, there's a fix for that. It is a time consuming fix where I feel like I have to wait till it's a little bit better weather so I can actually be outside. I may need to jack the car up. I may need to take it to a mechanic because it's, but because it's a timely repair or a time heavy repair, labor heavy repair, I feel like the labor cost is going to be expensive. It's one more thing to add to the list. And, and this is something when we bought the car, I didn't realize the extent of how bad it was. But when I took the car to be detailed, what I what we noticed, my husband and I both, when we drove it, was there was a very strong air freshener smell. And I thought, okay, the guy, I didn't want to be prejudgmental on the guy, but it smelled like a very strong cologne. And I'm like, oh, maybe he's just a little heavy with the cologne. When I took the car to be detailed and mentioned the, the scent, the, te the tech, the manager at the detail shop went out and said, it smells like someone's been smoking in this car. And I'm like, no. So that's one more thing in addition to the brakes and the wet floorboard is the fact that the car has been smoked in and after several rounds, so we did many things, all this from last month into this month, we had it detailed, cleaned on the inside. The, the guy at the detail shop gave us an, an extra car bomb to try to get rid of the scent. I left, left white vinegar, I mean buckets of white vinegar in the car to try to absorb the scent out. It smells like wet vinegar and air freshener and smoke. White vinegar, air freshener and smoke. So it still smells like that in the air freshener that was used to cover it up. So that's very frustrating. And I'm kind of a little bit irritated. I mean, to, to be fair, we didn't catch it. So a seller was under no obligation to disclose that. But I'm like, we obviously, we had a, a child with us. And someone had been smoking in that car and he didn't mention me, which of course not as a seller, you're not going to do that, but it was really frustrating. So those are all the challenges again, initially to do with the car. All of this because I know that this will work out in the long run, but the more money we put into the car, the more um, we'll have to drive it to get our money's worth. So, and I know there, there was a commenter on this channel who would be like, just lease a car and write it off on your business expense, which we may end up going that, that route at some point. But for right now, this is where we are. So that's where it is. And I hope, and this is just like the car. There are, <laughs> the car is the biggest challenge, to be honest. And now to reaffirm my commitment to financial independence, because I want to build, have the vision very much in front of my mind of time freedom, of not having to work for a paycheck of having enough coming in in our assets having enough um being able to take distribution from our assets and making the interest being able to live off of the interest of our assets and having that cover all of our monthly expenses i've mentioned before my monthly nut is around fifteen hundred dollars wouldn't it be awesome to make fifteen hundred dollars in interest on what i have and be able to pay that out and not worry about working for a paycheck so that's, I mean, little baby step goals to be able to spend a random Tuesday and go to the beach or go decide that we want to spend a weekend away or go to Florida for the weekend or travel debt free, not having to worry about logging into work. That's the goal. And I really want to keep that in mind because what gets frustrating is when people who don't have a high net worth and don't aren't working toward financial freedom and are trapped in that sort of treadmill start to criticize your decisions <laughs> and that's like which thankfully that has not happened because we haven't been around those types of people thankfully as much so that's a wonderful thing and i want to again keep affirming the benefits of financial independence of having an emergency fund uh, that can cover three to six months of expenses of knowing that ideally our plan is the older my child gets, the older, if God should give us more kids, the older they get, the more time freedom we have, the more we're able to spend time with them and not worry about needing to work. That's the goal. So I want to keep reaffirming that for myself and know that whatever I'm dealing with right now is worth it for that ultimate goal of freedom. 
So that's how my journey toward financial independence is going right now. It's January of 2024. And I just, I have to look back at my history and say that at each point, if I look back five years, like if I, if I look back at January of 2019, my life's so different than where I was in January of 2019. I was single. I didn't have any kids. I had a mountain of debt, student loan debt. I did not have credit card debt at that point. <laughs> but my life is completely different. And at each point, I want to be able to look for, if, even if I look at 2014, completely different, single, no kids. And I want to project forward in the amazing ways that being financially independent will benefit me. So that's just kind of where I'm at right now and reaffirming my commitment to working toward financial independence and getting through these momentary inconveniences for the greater goal. I would rather be inconvenienced working towards something greater than inconvenienced going the wrong way and being trapped in this treadmill class. So that's where I am. That's what's going on in my journey to financial independence. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I hope you'll keep watching.